And then, as you notice, there's not a lot of plants in the pond. There's a lot of so I got tomatoes, pasta, daylily. Forgot what that's called over there. Forgot. Water hyacinths. The filters are full of chameleon plant. Chameleon. Like a, you know, the lizard. And then my hostas, which bloomed. All those are were flower stalks that are that have died. More hostas and then this uh, common rush. Behind it you can see the leaves right there, that's purple basil. More hosta and then hosta. Blue hosta. These are blue hosta. Oh, they didn't bloom this year. I just realized that I'm sorry I had a blonde moment, but um my blue hostas didn't bloom this year, which is a little bit, a little bit upsetting because they're really pretty. I guess it's probably because I had to move them. And then my Rose of Sharon. Is there any... Oh, there's a flower up there. Also, they're actually a type of hibiscus. Which can be grown in the pond. They can... I could take... I could... Technically, I could take that. Stick it in a pot and stick it in the water. And it would grow just fine. And then my other daylilies. Daylilies, and I didn't know daylilies do this, but look, cool, huh? I think it's pretty cool. And then I've got violets. I've got violets growing everywhere because I love violets. I love them. They're so cool looking. And then more hostas and creeping Jenny. Got creeping Jenny right there, and there's some over there. Can't really see it. Let's see. And you can kind of see it through the daylilies. Lots of zoom in. So my tomatoes. Cherry tomatoes. Tomato plants were actually just for the turtles. The tomatoes I would just leave. I'd just leave them and let the tomatoes fall. And the turtles would come out and eat the tomatoes. And drag them back in and eat them. Because they can't eat while they're out of water. Aquatic turtles can't anyway. And um... Yeah. And then now off to the nursery. Okay, this is the nursery for my fish. As it, um, these are actually where the babies from the video Spring Comet Goldfish Fry. All those babies are in here. They were kept in the nursery way over there. But now that's just got lilies in it. And um, now this is my nursery. Ooh, it looks actually, look, actually looks like a pretty pond. Ooh. It's got some high, high, oh, water hyacinth in there. Can't really see the babies because they're hiding in the bottom. But they are really pretty. And then this is a hosta. It already bloomed. It had seven flower spikes. But then out of nowhere, even though, see, it was, start, it was dying off for the winter. And then out of nowhere, poof, it starts growing again. And there's another flower stalk. What in the world? But, hey, I ain't going to complain. I think it's pretty awesome. But, um, there's still some food floating around in there. And then I've got the net on here because bullfrogs. And I want bullfrogs getting in there and eating them. Because that would be bad. And, well, this really upsets me. You can't see the babies. I really wanted y'all to see them. Oh, I can see their shadows, but you wouldn't be able to see it in the video. Um, that's just a bit of a disappointment. But, um, here. It needs to be cleaned anyway, so I'll go ahead and drain it so y'all can see. So, okay, so I drained the nursery, with, and I'll explain why I'm able to do this in a minute. Cause, and, um, so y'all can see the babies. And this net's getting in the way. Ugh, God, so many obstacles. There we go. And, um, there are my babies. They're all goldfish. There's no koi, I guess. Koi didn't spawn this year. Oh, well. But, um, look at that one. That one is really good. These are all comet goldfish, except for the white ones. I don't know what the white ones are, but they're not koi. That one right there. It's really cool. See how his color wraps around his dorsal fin? Well, it used to go all the way around in a perfect ring. Kind of like a target. That was really cool. And then... There's 15 babies in here. Okay. And all of them, their mother is the comet in the big pond. Really pretty. But I've got a little fish cave in there for them so they can hide. Just to make them feel more secure. And then I've got a little box filter. 
and then I've got the hosta. Those are the roots from the hosta, actually. Those are all roots from that. Got a little fish tank cave thing in there. They really like the roots. They do. They really like to hide in the roots. But um, I drained it so y'all could see it, and it needed a water tra needed a water change anyway. But um, I just stuck the pump in there, you know, and then drained all the water out. And then a lot of you are going to be like, well, you can't do that because it's going to mess up the water perimeters and you might kill them. Well, yes, you are correct. But when I fill this back up, I fill it with water from there. I just stick that pump in the big pond and pump water out of there into here. And that way, the water that is going into here is already um, perimetized. I don't know what the word is. The water perimeters of in there and in here are the same. So I'm pretty much taking dirty water out of here and putting cleaner water of the same kind in here. I don't know how else to explain it. But when they are still like the size of a pinhead, you do not want to do a water change. And if you do, well, okay, let me rephrase that. If they're the size of a pinhead, you want to do water changes, but you have to be extremely careful. Okay, very careful because you can lose a lot. I have a friend who had like 800 or so baby koi fry, and when they did water changes, every time they did a water change, like half the babies would die. So, and she went from 800 to 16. She has 16 koi, you know, from this year. Spawning, they're smaller than this, but they're still koi. And I'm, oh look, everybody's coming out. Oh, oh. I have 15 from this year. A couple of them are really good looking, like that one. I'm keeping, definitely keeping that one and a few of the, I'm definitely keeping a few of these. The rest of them I'm going to give away to one of my friends. Just because I don't really see any point in selling them. Next year I'm just going to breed the Comet. And then I'll breed the Koi. Because the Comet, as you can tell, the, ba the Comet babies are a lot more attractive than these white ones. I don't know what the white ones are. I, uh, if anybody knows, please tell me. I, I guess they might be comets that didn't get their color or something, or I don't know. I know one of them down there is actually an albino, because I looked at him, and he has pink eyes. I thought that was pretty cool, so I'm going to keep him. And, um, they grow pretty fast. But they're really attractive. Oh, that one over there. See that one? That one's really cool. That one's really good. And that one's really good. See, there's the one that had a target. You can see it used to wrap around, but it faded away. And that one, I love that one right there. Oh, he's down in the mid, down under now. That one's a good one, too. Oh, I'm sitting here rambling on about how good the choir, uh, goldfish are. But, um, yeah, that's my nursery. And every two weeks, I take... And I take out this much water, and then I take the filter box down there, and I wash it. I wash the filter pads and everything. And then I drain most of the water out of here, and I fill it back up with pond water. And then that's how I do it, and it's worked pretty well. This is my nursery, so it's better than the little barrel I had. But, um, there you go.